Okay, so I did a little bit of extra work, um, and as I was saying, uh, I found out that the mainspring and the barrel basically were completely bad. Now, I shouldn't have been surprised at this, because we know that this movement got some water in it. Um, I mean, some moisture. We, You will remember that when I pulled off the paw lever, it had a bunch of corrosion on it. And that corrosion actually had pretty much destroyed these two parts. This paw lever sits right here. And it, it goes back and forth, but it's like the, this this cam is all worn out, and the, the teeth are worn out, and this this intermediate wheel was worn out, and so much so that actually even the ratchet wheel had fairly significant wear on the on the center port right there, and it was flopping around, and so those all of these winding parts got replaced. So it's like I said, it's or I've said, you always have to be careful watches that come from any kind of a tropical sort of environment, even one like this, with so much good going for it, you're still going to potentially run into problems where you have, you know, multiple parts going bad. I mean, we have, we have five components here that are dead. Actually, if you want to count this, this is actually one, two, three, four. It's, you know, you've got the barrel and the arbor and the, and the, and everything else. I mean, it's all, it's all dead. But that said, we have it all together and it is running, the dial is clean, and it is good to go. So, now talking about the handset. Here's the original handset, which I have reloomed. They look really bright white in this, but I swear to goodness they're not. I, ma I did it to match the original loom on this pit. Um, a stock set of 6309 hands, uh, 7002 hands, are, have this kind of green look to them, which I it's one of the few things about the 7002 that kind of honestly bug me. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with the original handset. Hang on just one second. Okay, so let's move this forward until it clicks over. And it's starting to go there. Let's put this in there. I like using this. This is a this is a movement holder for a 6139, but it actually it's the right size and it holds the it holds this movement very very nicely and firmly, which I like. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this. I put these. Uh, this is a, these are the original hands. They have a little bit of plating loss, nothing major, but they do. And let's let's do it like this. Drop that on. Okay, how's that look? Good and flush. Excellent. And move it forward. That'll pop here in just a second. Not a super exact science. I used to really worry about making sure that it, it dropped right on the minute, but I'm usually a couple minutes off. Uh, but Unless I'm actually awake at midnight, I don't think about it too much. So there we go. Let's get that minute hand on there. Let's see how that's going. Let's see if the hands are parallel. They appear to be. Okay. So let's go ahead and drop this on. Here's our last placement here. Let's drop that in place. And there she blows. So now we can and there it is. There it is in all of its glory. Now again, this is a slightly unusual look simply because these hands normally would be that sort of faintly greenish loom, faintly to extremely greenish, but I just think it looks weird. And again, I'm matching this original loom on this, on this pip. So there's a, there's a rhyme to my reason. Wait, where's there a right reason to my rhyme? I don't know. It's been a long day. Gosh, it's been a long day. Uh, let's see. Let's get this crown out. Okay, so he, there's a certain way I like to do things. If you have our movement here, here's our case all ready to go. Uh, we're going to put that case in there just like that. I've already greased up the uh, inside of the, uh, come on, 
I've already greased up the inside of the movement. Hold on just one second. And make sure that that's aligned correctly. There we go. So there's that. So there's this piece here. Let's get these hands out of the way. And I don't think we need these dead parts anymore. Yeah, you know, what's crazy about water is you just, I always say, you just never know what you're going to find. Sometimes the water will miss everything. Sometimes it'll destroy everything. But even in watches where it looked like they got off relatively light, the watch can, the water could have done a major, major job on, uh, on what's going on. Let's see now. And this is one of the things that people don't like about these movements is the plastic ring spring here. But, you know. What are you gonna do? It, it is what it is. I haven't yet found an alternative to that, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I'm sure I will someday, but I think the biggest problem with them is that they're prone to cracking. And so if they do that, then you're in kind of a, you're in kind of a, um, you're in kind of a, a bad uh, situation. So hold on. Okay, so there this is. You've got that in place now. Let's uh, just for fun blow this a little clean. Now, this the 7002s were the first diver that Seiko used this nylon ring situation on. And so they were, this is the first time they used this system, which is a chapter ring with a little, with a little boop in the top of it here and a hole that goes right here. This is the source of a lot of the alignment issues that people find in, in modern Seikos. Generally, I don't have too many problems with it. It does happen sometimes. Every now and then, I will need to go and actually shave that little pip in there to get this to behave. As you can see, we've got some minor alignment issues here. See, it's over just a little bit, down a little bit, and that is... You know, it's there. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to modify that pip a little bit. I'm going to pull some material off this side so we can turn it and get it aligned correctly. Okay. So I'm going to do that. But again, I don't want to have the video going while I'm doing that. So I'm going to stop that. Okay. So I got that done. It took a little bit of shaving, not not a lot. But one of the nice things about doing that is I, I is I, I give if you do it just enough, it gives you a little attitude where. Once that's shaved down, you can put in this nylon seal for holding in the gasket, and that presses down and it gives a little grip to the ring so it doesn't move all over the place. But I would think that that's pretty good for alignment. That looks pretty decent. It's unfortunate that, you know, we have to go through this process. You'd think it should just be drop in and ready to go, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so now we're ready for one of our brand, brand new handy dandy Klein Vintage Watch 320W23HN01 crystals are perfect recreations of the of the originals because the originals are very hard to find now. So let's oh, we gotta get things going here. Let's uh, so I've got a couple different things. I usually have a bunch of different setups here for 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 crystal presses because um, I don't like having to swap dies out if I can if I can avoid it. Hang on just one second. Let's see. I just, I, I, I personally like just being able to drop, grab whichever one I need, which is preset. Gosh darn it, how do I do that? Okay. And there that is. Now, Seiko did do one smart thing. The old 6309 cases and 6105 cases, I actually happen to have a 6105 case here, their click balls were permanent assembly. You can see here, they had a hole in the case, they put in the click ball and spring, then they crimped around it. You can actually see there's a little dip here where they did that. Problem is, is if dirt or crud or grunk or whatever gets in here or rust or corrosion, that's it. You're done. The case is done. You have to replace it. So for a very brief window of time between the arrival of this case and the arrival of this, of the one direction single, you know, unidirectional indexing where they had the flat springs, leaf springs, Seiko used a click and a spring and a ball in a cartridge. It's actually, it's a kind of a pretty amazingly cool system, but uh, you know, they decided to, let me make sure I can drop this in here. They used that for a little bit, but not, not terribly long because they went to the unidirectional shortly thereafter and 
that was really the end of that. So that slots right into the case right there. The nice thing is, is it's replaceable, which is cool. So let's go here. Let's get our handy dandy BB Crystal, BB Crystal Company press. This is a really nice press, nice old heavy piece of business. Really nice set that came from my tutor when he retired. He sent that to me. I mean, we could have got a little less bright on the hands, but it's not as bright in person as it looks on the screen, trust me. I'm comparing and contrasting them. The hand here looks much closer to this in reality. Maybe it's a little bright. I might go in and redo those hands and darken them down just a touch. Vintelu might have been a bit much. It looks that way through the screen, but in person, trust me, it doesn't look that strident. Hmm, I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll think about dropping that down just a little bit because it might be too bright. I don't know. You tell me. Well, there it is. Okay. Well, let's uh, let me look at the hands and let me think about that, and then we'll maybe decide about going back in there, pulling the handset, stripping this loom out, making it a little darker. I'm not sure yet. I'll see how the mood strikes me. Okay. Well, that took a lot more work than it should have, but I had a triumph. So I took the handset that I was relooming. And I, I looked at the loom and I'm like, I've, I've got to have to dig through. I, I swear I have a, a, a sample of this, this correct late 7002 hand loom, the stuff that isn't green. So I was digging through. I dug through all of my crazy stuff. I have, I have all my different boxes of materials. And I found a set of original 7002 hands. These are original, late, non-green 7002 hands you can tell because of the angle of the metal on the hour hand especially and that the minute the the sweep second hand has the same profile as the 6309 hand with the with the flat sharp edge surface it's the same width as this so this handset is correct this is the this is what this watch would have had originally so this is what it would have looked like you know but it's amazing you know, it's it's always a, it's always more work. People send me watches that have had some water inside or some kind of damage, and it adds so much to the watch to to get this stuff done. Well, I say let's break and let's let's talk about it just a little bit, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I'm just so pleased with it. This kind of combination you don't see very often. You really you just don't. It's a late piece, and that's original tan loom with the, with the bright silver printing around it and the correct original handset. Boy, these original handsets, that's... I, I, I had a crazy feeling that I had one of these handsets. I do. I did, and I dug and dug and dug, and there they were. There they were. And you can see how these look together. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty rare combination, but we know that's what it looked like originally. I'm just amazed all the all the, the the damage that water did. It gets in there and it just roasts stuff. Anyway, that's about it. So that's really fun. Oh, okay. Now let's break. Okay.